I fell in love with Tazan Lake Lodge uh, pretty much as soon as I landed. Just, it's, it's a beautiful lake. It's a unique setting. I mean, northern Saskatchewan, you can't go wrong up here. Once you start catching the fish, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's all about the fish, really. Everything else is just a bonus. You've kind of got to experience it for yourself. Seeing those, you know, with that 45 inch lake trout with your own eyes kind of mind boggles you and, and makes you want to chase it more. So I feel like if you come up and experience those fish for your own self and put your own hands on them, it'll open your eyes and, and you'll want to come back for more and more every year. You know, I think there's only a few places in the world that you can catch that size of fish and you don't have to go across 40 miles of big open water or, you know, like here you can, you can fish every day no matter what the conditions. If you're looking to catch a personal best lake trout or northern pike, there may be no other place better to do it than here. And if, if you're passionate about big fish and you want to do it, whether you go on trips like this all the time or you're looking for a once in a lifetime experience, this is the place to go. You know, Trevor, I have seen that video so many times. It's, it just boggles my mind that I have yet to have the experience of traveling up to Northern Saskatchewan and, uh, and experiencing that of Tazan Lake Lodge. Everybody, my name is Mark Melnick. Welcome to this Wednesday night live show um, with the new Fly Fisher live. My name again is Mark and I'm with uh, Trevor Montgomery from Tazan Lake Lodge. Trevor, how's it going tonight in Saskatchewan? Oh, it's going great, Mark. Beautiful day here. Finally starting to melt, so spring's coming. <laughs> Finally starting to melt, which means that you actually are going to be looking at getting up north soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Early June, we'll get up there. I was just on the ice last night fishing on Tobin Lake. So I just made her home uh, this morning to start doing this with you. And how was the fishing? Uh, it was good. I went, I have an ice castle I leave on the lake for the three months of the winter. So I just went a couple more days. It has to be off the ice and I won't be back up there before then. So nice. Nice, nice. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you've got, what you're offering at Tazan Lake Lodge. Tazan Lake is unique experience that Jenna McEwen and our editor Caitlin Martell got to experience this year. Um, it, it is a, uh, a remote fly-in fishery that has world-class lake trout and northern pike fishing. Tell me a little bit about what Tazan Lake's all about. Sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's a big deep lake in the northern uh, northwest corner of Saskatchewan, of course, uh, and that's what makes it so unique. Um, it's in an area as well where it's never been commercially netted and never can be. It's been in a special management zone and now it's turned into a protected area. And so it's uh, it really holds that fishery with it, uh, you know, staying at the quality that it is. We've always maintained to keep uh, keep the quality high and the quantity low. So we try not to run lots of guests and but, you know, keeping the fish, the fishing pressure lower and, and the quality of the fish you catch high. So it's a, it's a quite unique, unique experience. So are you guys the only lodge on the lake? No, there's another lodge on the corner called Chimo Lodge. Uh, they're not real active. Uh, the The owner, he, he's owned it for about 35 years. And I think he's just uh, basically happy to go up for a couple of weeks every summer by himself. So you basically have the place to yourself. Absolutely, yeah. And tell me about the fishery. Sure, yeah. Lake trout, northern pike. Um, and, of course, the forage species, uh, whitefish, burbot, deepwater sculpin and uh, Cisco's, uh, but the size of the fish are, are world-class. You don't find them at many other water bodies, the same as what we have there. So let's talk a little bit about your background, Trevor. What, what, how did you get involved in the outfitting business? I mean, I mean, you're up, literally up in the middle of nowhere with probably millions and millions of acres of water that's fishable. Mm -hmm. How did you get Um, Basically, I was working at another camp and uh, a guy I knew bought the camp 
and I went up to be his head guide for a couple of years. And then he uh, didn't do well, so he kind of went out of business. The camp sat for a few years, and then myself and three other guys purchased the camp back in 2011. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then in 2018, myself and my current partner, Barry Prawl, we bought out the other three partners. Right. And you have another lodge, too, that you run as well. Yes. Uh, camp Grayling in Stony Rapids uh, on Black Lake. Um, and then Barry also has a, a lodge on uh, Tobin Lake in central Saskatchewan for hunting and fishing. Right, right. Well, let's take a look at how you actually get to Tazan Lake Lodge. Sure. <laughs> A typical fishing trip at Tazan Lake Lodge, what we call the Tazan Lake Experience. Fly out from, from Fort McMurray on an airplane, on a caravan, an amphibious caravan. It's usually an hour and 45 minutes to two hours, depending on the wind. Uh, you arrive at the dock, you land right at the dock, show you your signed cabin. All the accommodations at Tazan Lake Lodge have hot and cold running water, uh, of course, showers, uh, flush toilets, uh, you know, wood stoves currently. Tazan Lake Lodge is located in the northwest corner of Saskatchewan. It's a very unique area. It is uh, in the Tazan Lake Upland region. It is totally different than anywhere else you'll find in Saskatchewan. It's like mini mountains. You know, we're 25 air miles north of uh, Lake Athabasca, and we sit 550 feet in elevation higher than Lake Athabasca. So in that 25 miles, it's quite a jut up in elevation, which kind of makes it unique for, you know, I guess the seasons, even the weather. We have a lot of sand, a lot of northern shield, you know, a lot of the rocks and, and the mountains are red from the iron in there. Tazan Lake is a, a deep lake, 25 miles long and 12 miles wide. We have two major species that we fish for, northern pike and lake trout. We have, you know, world-class fishing for both those species. Earlier in the year like this, where it starts out where the water's pretty cold, so we're looking for warmer water. A lot of times early in the spring, we're gonna fish a little bit shallower, and then as the season progresses, uh, everything moves out into the, their preferred temperature of water, and then we're going to fish in those areas. Before we get into the species and, and the seasons at Tazan Lake Lodge, let's talk about the lodge physically as to what people can expect when they book and they actually go up there. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about your, your facilities and, you know, what, what you offer. Sure. Um, so the lodge is a traditional log lodge built out of, uh, uh, of course, local timber. And uh, it's quite nice that way. Uh, tongue and groove pine inside, of course, a bathroom in the main lodge itself, the dining area, a tackle shop uh, and, and a bar. And uh, then the kitchen and a sitting area with uh, TV in that. Um, then the cabins themselves are tongue and groove pine inside. Uh, there's a, a number of cabins that house either two or four people. So and uh, yeah yeah, hot cold running water you know showers uh flush toilets every everything to be clean warm and dry comfortable you know uh we're we're right on the 60th parallel so you know it's up there (laughs) 59th i guess but uh it's up there so you know it's uh one unique thing with us is we got to fly everything in you know so it, it definitely with camps like that they take a little longer to build than the ones that have a road there because of course uh the costs involved are a whole bunch different Exactly. What about Wi-Fi? Have you got Wi-Fi service up there? Absolutely. Yeah, and good quality Wi-Fi. Uh, we should have uh, our good old Starlink this year, so it should be uh, even better than we've had in previous years. Yeah, that'll be a game changer. We've got we've got that we've got the RV service at uh, at one of our our summer places, and it, it's uh, it, it, it's a, it's a total game changer. I mean, I can do any business that, that you ever need to do, and and to have that on site for those that might need it those executives or, or business people that or kids that want to be in touch with their friends and family at home or whatever it's yeah great all right let's let's move on to the seasons of taz and lake mm-hmm. um, t- let's walk through an entire season at taz and what people people can expect not only fishery wise mm-hmm. but where those fish might be located and how to target them so sure. let's start spring time Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, early spring, water's cold. It's a big lake. Uh, it takes a while for the ice to come off and then it takes a while for it to warm up, you know. So typically we're fishing uh, fishing shallower for the pike, especially uh, the Lakers, you know, the lake trout, we fish anywhere from shallow to deep uh, throughout the season, or I do anyway, because, you know, they, they come up uh, when the water's cold, but they also still live on the bottom, you know. So a lot of times you can target them. They're just not quite as active as they will be. Uh, you're you're basically going to their living room instead of the kitchen. That's the only right. difference, right? So, um, 
but yeah, I'm typically starting out like that uh, for that first three weeks or so. It's going to be, you know, cooler water, cooler evening temperatures, because of course the ground, the water's so cold and uh, and that. Um, when and do then, the bug, when do the bugs come out? Not until it really warms up, you know, right. and uh, and as a whole, Towson actually is is very good for bugs compared to a lot of other places I've been over the years. We don't have a lot of bugs, you know, evening mosquitoes that you're going to see everywhere. Of and of course, we do have some of those uh, some of those new uh, new mosquito units there with the uh, shoot. I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head, but uh, but yeah, those mosquito units we have on the around the lodge and uh, the dining areas and outside stuff, you know, so keeps that, them right, away. That, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, so delivery. so what about what about summertime? So I asked I asked about mosquitoes because or bugs in general because the north is is world renowned for mosquitoes and black flies that'll pick you up and carry you away. Yes. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that that window when you open up until things warm up in in you know mid to late June, mm -hmm. early July. It's, it's called shoulder season and there are no bugs there at all. And oftentimes post spawn pike and, and, and Lakers that are coming in shallow to feed, which is, which we need to talk about in just a second here, but post spawn mm -hmm. pike are looking to fatten up big time. Yeah. And without any bugs there, you, as an, ang as an angler, you really have it made and there's no, nobody that is interested that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and you're exactly right. Until the water really warms up and the ground warms up, you know, there there is no bucks. You don't even get a hatch. Uh, uh, the shoulder season are my fi favorite seasons of the, of the year because, uh, you know, no bugs at all. Right. So now, now, when your ice is out, is are, are you fishing pike typical post-spawn ice out pike where you're in shallow shallow-ish dark bottom bays site casting to logs basically south facing absolutely yeah uh creeks running in especially after rain we're looking for a half to one degree water temperature difference sometimes or five to ten if you can find it you know right but, uh but yeah if you know and a lot of times we're not going to go fish pike in the morning in the springtime because you know you gotta let them warm up or they, they're still going to be there but they're not going to be active a lot of times so um uh, We'll right. go fish the Lakers in the morning and then go out and fish for some of them pike after the sun's been out for a while or or after a rain where some water's flown in and you can really uh, find a difference because a lot of our a lot of our runoffs and drainages come in out of the hills, you know, so they're yeah. they're higher, smaller lakes that flow in or through muskeg and and that warms up pretty quick. So one of the interesting things about fishing in the north, whether it's northern Saskatchewan or what have you, is that or, or those those lakes that do hold lake trout mm -hmm. is that when the ice comes off and those and those backwater bays warm up the first thing that move into those backwater bays are bait fish mm -hmm. so you're gonna see because it's warmer water they're gonna move in there because it's more comfortable yes. what you're gonna see at that time is predatory fish like northern pike and those big lake trout that are the leviathans of the deep that are down 160 to 120 feet deep they're yeah. gonna come shallow willingly to hunt Talk to me a little bit about fly fishing for lake trout in the spring in those shallows and how effective it might be. Certainly. Uh, it's very effective. Of course, uh, trying to figure out or, or match what the hatch is. So determining what the bait fish are that they're engorging themselves on, right. um, you know, is a big part of it. They do tend to push and, and the wind can be a, definitely a friend to you at that time of year too, as well. Cause of course it will push some of that bait up into, into certain areas. Uh, and yeah, a lot, the nice thing at Tazan too, as well, is it's quite clear water. So a lot of times you can see and target even Lakers right. out there, you know, stacked up or even down 10, 12, 15 feet, but it's just nice and clear and you can see them down there. Right. So those of you who, who think that, you know, lake trout are uncatchable on fly, there's two seasons where they're very catchable on fly. And we'll get to the fall season in a minute, but the mm -hmm. springtime when they're up chasing bait is a fantastic time to target fish because they're coming up to feed, to fatten up, and they will be relentless on a fly. They will attack anything that looks in the same cycle. If you, I'll ask you this, if you'll agree with me, same pro size profile first versus um, color or actual matching the hatch with the species. Size profile is key, isn't it? Yeah, I, I do believe that, especially at certain times of the year, you know? Right. Absolutely. Right. 
Okay, let's move on to the summertime. Tell me about your summer fishery and and uh, what these lake trout and and we can talk conventional too if you want. If 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 things move into conventional or if you're still able to target them on fly. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we like to target them both ways, of course. Uh, whatever a client wants to do, typically we're going to do. Um, as we move into the summertime, water starts to warm. We start to get some weed growth, especially in the backwaters. You know, our main, uh, the main basin itself, typically the weed growth is a little slower because it takes quite a bit longer. You know, it, it's so deep. Uh, the deepest spot in Tazan is 900 feet. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of two, three, 400, even 450, 500 miles and miles and miles of it. So, you know, it just, it takes a long time to warm up for the main basin itself. Um, so we're looking for the backwaters in that earlier part. Um, and then once again, creeks running in, uh, you know, saddles, neck downs. Uh, and we have a lot, we have uh, five major rivers that are flowing into Tazan. So we have quite a bit of backwaters we can fish, you know, and, uh, and they hold a lot of pike as well as trout. Cause you know, uh, some of these rivers are 120 or 150 feet coming in deep, you know, so they're, they're not little yeah. tiny rivers either by any means. Well, I had no, I had no idea that the system was that, that, that big, that yeah. absolutely like that's, that's trying. Well, let's take a look at another video. Jenna McEwen and our editor, uh, Caitlin Martell went up to visit, uh, you. What time mm -hmm. of year was that? That was sort of first group June 14th last year, right? Middle of June. And, 19. and um, I'm going to show, show you what the fishing can be like here with jenna's first fish at tazan lake Ooh, got a fly that they're biting anyway that's a good sign very very good sign absolutely there you go good set thank you all righty whoa Just got a flash. It looked right on. Nice fish. Growing. All right, buddy. Right on. Good fighting, Jenna. Keep Thank going. Thank you. Well, don't don't congratulate me yet. We don't have the boat. Oh, that's okay. Well, you hooked oh, it. You have man. good form. Okay, just keep it away from the boat for a sec. Trying, trying, trying. Excellent. Wow. Good job. Holy smokes, tearing up. <laughs> We went down the, the lake earlier today. Uh, and the water's pretty cold up in there, so we decided to come back and uh, and stop and hit a spot on the way back to camp here. Uh, it's one of our one of our uh, trophy pike spots, and we got in here. Water kept warming up. It was you know 52, 53 degrees out front. As we moved farther into the bay, it got into the the mid 60s, right where we want it. And of course, when that happened, the fish get active. So we got in there, got a few small ones, and then uh, hooked into a 41 incher. Jenna landed mud stick bottom bay, so it really absorbs a lot of that. Uh, a lot of that heat and then the wind's blowing in too as well and it's pushing some of the warm water from the other side of the bay into here too as well so it's uh, some great conditions eelgrass is just starting to grow so we're fishing in some of that areas where you know in another week or a few days there'll be eelgrass all over and it gets harder to fish it so this is a prime time to be able to come and fish some of these spots for that not too bad huh first fish a 41 inch or trophy trophy <laughs> trophy saskatchewan gator <laughs> that's pretty sweet yeah, for sure. Uh, and conditions were good. Anytime we get that water temperature like that warming up, you know that if you find that temperature, most times it's going to have active fish in it. So talk to me about Tazan, Tazan as, as a water body with respect to chasing temperature, because a lot of people think that you have to hunt fish mm -hmm. um, in the north. But that's really a misnomer. Uh, you, you don't hunt fish at all. You hunt temperatures. Tell me what's optimum on your lake for, for you know, early season to, to summertime. Sure. Well, in early, early season, we just look for a difference in temperature more than anything else. You know, right. like I said, it can be a half a degree or a degree or even two or three or five or 10, but sometimes just that difference in temperature uh, concentrates a bunch of fish and right. often makes them active, you know, um, and they're in the early spring. We definitely looking for that warmer water. 
you know, standard, if we can find 65, that's great, but that's optimum temperature for northern uh, northern pike, and you can't always find that in that early spring either, you know. Uh, Lake right. Trout, we're a lot of times looking for, you know, 52 to 56 is kind of that optimum range where you're going to uh, do it. But once again, they'll, they'll feed it anytime if you get your hook in front of them a lot of times, but, you know, they're just not quite as active. Right. So let's move into the fall season. So you, you've, you've covered summertime. Mm-hmm. Um, fall is, is a unique time. I love fishing those species in the fall when mm-hmm. the lake trout come up in the shallows, preparing to spawn when the Northern Pike put the feed bag on, cause they know that that winter's coming, things yeah. are getting colder. Let's talk about your fall fishery and, mm-hmm. and what, what people can expect at Tazan like that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, as the trout start to move up like that, you know, we have a transition period for a short period of time as the water kind of changes and goes from warmer to colder. And uh, that usually signifies when you start getting some cooler evening temperatures, right? Yeah. Um, and then those, the the lake trout start moving up and then, and then that's when the main basin really, the weeds really have matured by that time. So the pike really are hard into the weeds and, and they're at their biggest size for our season. You know, they got their shoulders, they got big bellies, they're feeding hard. They're eating everything they can see. Uh, a lot of times we move to, you know, bigger baits we start to use or bigger flies, big streamers, big bunnies, whatever we can have that's going to, you know, mimic what the, the size of bait fish. They're looking for big stuff at that time of year. Um, a lot of times we are going to be fishing. But they're metabol- sorry, sorry, Trevor, but they're, at that time of year, their metabolism hasn't started to slow yet, has it? So you still have opportunity to target northerns on uh, in that heavy, dense cover on poppers too, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and they so really, fun. yeah, and there's there's a window there where they've very much become active for that top water, you know, right. or anything moving, making noise. Uh, ducks, muskrats, you know, they, they feed on all that stuff. So if we can mimic that stuff too as well, it's very effective. Right. So when 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 during the season do things slow down for you to realize that the pike have start have started to move into their winter mode? Uh after we leave for the season. Gotcha. So you guys are you guys you guys are open until when and then and then that's about it, right? Yeah. Right now we're our season, this coming season is uh the fourteenth of June until the twelfth of September. Okay. And I've actually in the past have fished up there till, you know, first, second week of October before. And, you know, it does get, you start getting more wind and, you know, the weather turns unfavorable, but the fishing never shuts down. It's unbelievable. That's, uh, that sounds fantastic. That's yeah, cool. so, so in my experience, I've never fished Tazan, but in my experience, a lot of Northern Saskatchewan lakes, are unique in the sense that they have structure wooden rock with a little bit of weed. Is mm-hmm. that is that fair to say about Tazan or is, is Tazan a very green kind of lake? Like weedy, I mean. <clears throat> uh, some areas are weedy because there's a, there's a lot of sand, you know, right. and so we do get some weeds there. There's a lot of timber because it was actually like back in the – in the 30s, they built a, a dam and a tunnel on the lake, right? So they changed the flow of the lake from, it used to go to the northwest, and now it goes south into Lake Athabasca. And it used to go north, up into the Northwest Territories. So with that, right. they raised water levels about 13 feet. Right. So it did, you know, there's uh, quite a bit of timber in there. Uh, in certain areas, um, there is a lot, uh, a lot of weeds, a lot of transitions we fish, you know, mm-hmm. from rock to sand or sand to mud mud to rock kind of thing and those transitions are pretty key and then of course moving water when we start talking about those rivers and creeks flowing into as well you know rock piles lots of rock piles right are there grayling in those rivers no no No. hey um there there used to be apparently i've never seen a grayling in that watershed talking to people Mm -hmm. who are you know from the area originally they say there used to be when they backed up the lake of course, now rivers don't flow like they did when right. it was when the lake was 13 feet shallower. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, the reason why the reason why I ask about about the the greenery in the lake is mm-hmm. because I know that S- northern Saskatchewan rivers often fish all season long, or lakes, excuse me, often fish all season long the way they do in the spring, mm-hmm. where you can move into 
shallow bays and sight fish for northerns like oh, yeah. like you would in post spawn. Is that this is that phenomenon happen at Tasman? Absolutely, yes. And we have a lot of lily pads too, as well, with those rivers, right? Uh, those rivers flowing right. in, lots of lily pads too, as well, where you can run poppers and things like that through it, you know, and uh, and frogs if you're doing conventional, you know, frogs and things like that, any kind of surface bait. So we've talked a lot about northern pike. Let's, mm -hmm. um, you know, we we were fortunate enough to uh, reward, if you will, or or thank one of our our longtime uh, contributors to the show, Caitlin Martell. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to send her up and do her first fly-in fishing trip. And, you know, she fishes conventionally. She doesn't fish on fly. And you mm -hmm. were able to take her out um, to target the uh, lake trip. Let's take mm -hmm. a look at Caitlin's first lake trip experience. <laughs> the most exciting opportunities here at Tazan Lake Lodge is the chance of landing a ginormous lake trout. While this is usually only attainable by trolling with conventional gear, depending on the time of year, it's possible for fly anglers to hook into one of these beasts up in the shallows. Rylan took me over to cast a shallow rocky point adjacent to deep water. And Trevor took the time to teach Caitlin all about trolling for lake trout. Basically, you're going to be trolling like this. If you get a bite, all you want to do is go oh, like that, and then I'm going to hammer the engine that'll drive it home, and then just hold on. Basically, what we're going to do, and we're just, we're up in shallow, and now we're only at 40. We're going to turn around, and we're going to do a loop around, and we're going to target those three fish we see. We okay. know they're laying there. We know, you know, and pretty much a lake trout. We can get our line in front of it at the right depth and the right direction. We're going to get a bite almost every time, right? When we started the day today, we have a little overcast conditions, a little wind out of the southeast here. So we decided we were going to come out and try for some lake trout. Uh, I've been trolling for about an hour uh, and then just kind of nothing was happening. So we went for a hook change, just came up over a ledge and boom, got into one. So stuck it, it hit pretty good. Um, we're just fighting it now. Still got 110 feet of line out and we're just going to take a time and let it fight the hook, see what happens. So when we get them up to 40, 50, we start watching for bubbles because a lot of times that's when they'll expel their air and, and get the line, expel their air and get it all kicked out. So we'll see bubbles come up and uh, that tells us that, yeah, they're, you know, they're, uh, they're, I guess, getting in tune for the depth and the pressure they're at. After the first massive lake trout, it was game on. What an introduction. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, yeah, beautiful fish. Nice, big and girthy. Are you kidding me? That's that's nuts. That's nuts. Now, you know, we're a fly fishing TV show. Yeah. Uh, but we also understand the correlation and the relationship that fly fishing has with conventional angling. Mm -hmm. And from watching you present with 
Caitlin and Jenna on that show. You understand that very well. You are, as a guide, you know how they tie into each other. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that you can't catch on, on conventional at Tazin that you cannot catch on fly as well, correct? Oh, absolutely. That's for sure. Uh, presentation has to be typically a little bit slower so you can get down to that depth. Um, the angler having the, you know, the right necessary, uh, I guess, line weights and, and uh, you know, sinking tips, depending on what time of year too as well, you know, yeah. uh, definitely has some factors in it. But definitely, uh, yeah, I, well, I'm going to try and catch a 70 pounder on fire. <laughs> Let me put it that way. I've tried a few times, but I get spoiled. I get out there and I start, you know, hooking up to the conventional. So that that begs the question then, let's talk lodge weight records. What's your lodge rate, weight record for Northern Pike and what's your lodge weight record for um, uh, Lake, Lake Trout? Um, when I got it there in 05 and 06, uh, we had one that was 50 and a half inches with a 35 and a half inch girth, Lake Trout. Uh, that's still the biggest... According to the conversion scale, it's like 86 pounds or 85 pounds or something like that. Um, when uh, for pike, we just more so use length and girth. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, 51 and a half is the biggest one that I, any of my clients, or I guess I caught that one personally. Uh, I believe like a 53 or 54 is what previous owners years back had had. We catch usually one or two in the 50 inch range every year and, and a number in that high forties range, mid to high forties. That's insane. That, yeah. That's, that's an absolute stunning fishery, but there's a reason why yes. that fishery, that, that your fishery exists. Let's talk a little bit about your conservation uh, practices and, and, and what you, and I'm going to be blunt here, what you insist yeah. happens mm -hmm. at Taz and Lake Lodge, because you know what? People can come in and say, "Oh, I want, I want to do this, I want to do that, and everything." But there's a time when, as a as a manager of a fishery, you have to put your foot down and say, "Not happening, dude." Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, we practice catch and release, you know, uh, and we're adamant about it that you know, barbless catch and release. Uh, all we do is eat your lunch, and that's it. Nothing goes home with clients, uh, and of course, we've had. Clients that have, you know, hot to book and, oh, I can't take five fish home. It's like, I'll buy you some fish from a commercial fisherman in Fort McMurray if you want to take home with you, but you're not taking them out of our lake. You know, it just, it's unnecessary. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we have the fishery we have, because it's never been commercially netted and never can be. You know, it's the only lake in Saskatchewan like that. And uh, especially a lake of size like that to have that, you know, so um it does make a difference. We're very adamant about it. We make sure we have good equipment so we can fight it properly and, uh, you know, the, the right size gear for the for the fish and try and fight them so that we can get them in without fighting them too long and then, uh, you know, care for them good, that, the old CPR, catch, fold, or release, and mm -hmm. then uh, let them go. And, and I guess you're for me. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say we see a lot of times, uh, you know, we do see the same fish occasionally you know where you seen even that one i was holding it had a mark on the lip there you know you can see it it had been caught you know so and we see the same fish year after year and and different fish and you know yeah that's fantastic that's, mm. it's actually mark it's i got a story fantastic. for you with the pike i caught i caught one uh it was a 47 incher in 2012 i think it was 2012 2013 and uh, the 51 incher I caught, it, 100 yards away from where I caught that 47 incher, and afterwards I was looking through pictures. And I'm like, oh, look at that mark. Oh, look at same fish. Same fish. Went from 47 to 51 over an eight year span, seven eight year span, and it's on our Tazen TV series. It's we have it, uh, you know, me catching the one and then showing the pictures of the other one. Wow, uh, that's remarkable. Yeah, you know, I used to I, I fished with a guy named Zini Hall um, out of Colorado, and who's a trout angler, mm -hmm. and he is completely engrossed in 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 photography of every fish he catches, mm -hmm. and and he if, he's got shoe boxes in his I've seen it shoe boxes in his bedroom of 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 
Polaroids and prints of fish trick that he's caught. And what's yeah. amazing is that we did a test that he could, I could pull a photograph out of a shoebox and show him the photo. And he had all the details written on the back and he could name everything about that fish, the, the water temperature, the moon phase, the, the whatever it was, Ooh. you just rattle it yeah. off. Right? And Ooh. he had a number of fish that he has caught 15 times. 17 awesome. because his photography that is such a cool story trevor i think that yeah. that's absolutely amazing that you've got a fishery that i mean maybe you should start naming them <laughs> naming them yeah oh, they they got, all got a name we call them moby <laughs> <laughs> yeah giant. giant yeah all right let's talk let's get into the nitty-gritty of it let's uh let's look at the equipment that the that jenna used when she was fishing for uh northerns and lakers on Cousin Mike. Let's see. On this trip to Northern Saskatchewan here at Tazan Lake Lodge, I primarily used nine and 10 weight rods. While I came prepared with a variety of different lines, I was primarily using a full sinking line on my 10 weight rod and a floating line on my nine weight rod. It's really important to come prepared with a variety of different lines. You might be fishing shallow bays of three feet, or you could be out in deeper water at 12 to 15 feet. You really never know where the fish are going to be as the water starts to heat up and they're moving from deep to shallow. Coming with different lines and coming with a variety of different flies and different weights really allows you to explore and figure out where the fish are going to be taking. So equip, equipment for these big fish is interesting because mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of fly anglers that are that haven't fished for giants that you have assume that the bigger the fish, the bigger the rod. And that's not necessarily the case, especially where you are on Tazan Lake, which is a giant lake. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the considerations of wind and fly sizes when it relates to wad, uh, rod weight and um, lines as well. Certainly, yeah. Um, like standard for most of the, you know, I guess an all around rod, a nine weight, if, if you got a nine weight, you know, and uh, I like having both a floating and a sinking depending on, uh, I guess, the conditions itself. Uh, some, you know, you get an overcast cloudy day, a bit of a front moves in, you're going to want to go down a little bit below the surface, uh, whereas up in some of those shallows, kind of like Jenna had mentioned there, you know, you want a, something floating, uh, floating and, uh, you know, either either full floating or an intermediate tip where it's going to sink down a little bit, depending on how fast you're retrieving, you know. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, streamers and bunnies are hard to beat up there. You know, of course, claws are minnows too as well. And any anything that resembles something that's flashy more than anything, you know, and resemble some bait fish and matching the size. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, totally lost my train of thought here. We were talking oh. about, about lines. Um, let's move on to flies. We've sure. got different flies that you can use. Um, what are the major, um, food sources for the fish in, in, uh, Tazan Lake. So of course, pike and lake trout, uh, but also burbot. So uh, Mariah eel pout, uh, um, deep water sculpin, as well as uh, whitefish and ciscos. Right. So yeah. something something like this, mm -hmm. you know, mimicking mimic possibly mimicking a burbot, something that's a little bit darker. That mm -hmm. is. Uh, uh, um, large profile at the same time um how important are eyes do you think depends on the day you know i find every every day is different i like to make sure i have eyes on most of the flies i'm going to use right um top water flies big big offerings like uh like gir big gurglers mm -hmm. and and uh and poppers um you know are, is it the same at taz and like where you say sort of um, bright, 
bright sun, bright flies, dark sun or dark conditions, dark flies kind of deal? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's what that's kind of the, the standard. Of course, there's exceptions to every norm. Uh, but and in some areas, it's extremely dark water, like where some of the rivers are coming in out of the Muskeg, where they've been flowing through Muskeg for a long ways. It's tan in color, real dark right, right, you know, right. and that. But uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm a fan of, uh, of following that general standard. And any anything with with significant flash in it, gold and silver. Hmm. Works, works wonderfully. That's now, lake trout flies. Um, I'm, I'm, I've, again, I've never fished Tazan Lake, but I'm a huge fan of whistlers. Um, mm -hmm. Whistlers are fan, are fantastic lake trout fly in the shallows. Yeah. Um, the reason why they're called whistlers is because if you look at the the bead chain eye, it actually has a hole where the eye should be, and it makes a whistling sound as fly anglers cast it, but it also creates a bubble trail. Mm -hmm. as fly and different sizes too and that's a he more heavily weighted fly um so it, it creates a bubble trail that that attracts fish in and in the fall time when those big females are staging to spawn they may have a train of five or seven males in behind them and they're all competing right mm -hmm. so it's just super 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 fun to sight cast to those fish absolutely you can't reel it fast enough in the fall time you know? No, and it's it's and it's the barracuda the barracuda crawl, right? The, the, yeah. You're ripping it in as fast as you can. Yeah, as, as fast as you can. Um, let's talk about um, getting, not getting to Tazin, but the best time for people to book. Like, what? How's your booking system? What are you looking mm -hmm. at for this year? Are you booked? Do you have spaces? What's what's going on? We have some spaces, uh, especially you know we we have a couple of you know. During some of the weeks, we have, you know, availability for a two here or, or a two or a four here. Uh, and then once we get into that mid to late July and, and throughout August, we definitely have a little bit more opening capacity there. Uh, and then basically in the early part of September, we have a few groups booked that we want to keep the camp open to, you know, fish that spawn. That's part of our plan this year so we can showcase that and and that's a great time for fly anglers to come up to as well as that spawning time you know just because like you say the the quantity sheer quantity of fish as well you know yeah that's a great time. so yeah. so one of the things that's important is that is that in my opinion is that you're going a long way to get mm -hmm. to tazan lake lodge yes um you're going a long way but you're not out there on your own Let's no. talk a little bit about your guide program and who you've got that supports you to make sure that your 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 clients and friends catch fish. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we typically utilize uh, all experienced guides. Uh, they might have experience elsewhere or at our lodge, right? Uh, the I I also have a safety company, so I do a lot of training throughout northern Saskatchewan and train hunting and fishing guides. So I like to pride myself that we have a pretty good idea what we're looking for when we're looking for people um, and train them up to the standard that we're looking for, you know, uh, to make sure that not just they can fish, but also they can keep the clients safe. You know, they can handle the boat. Uh, one of the nice things about Tazan too as well is that it never really gets big waves either. So, you know, it's not some of the other lakes you go to, you know, you, you end up missing time on the water because you can't get on the lake. Or it's not comfortable because there's such big waves and so you know for control of the boat and that uh and we go through a guide school with our guides to make sure everybody's on the same page we all communicate and talk and you know we do a lot of guide talk every evening just discussing what did you do today how'd it go where were you you know uh what were the hooks that were working what did you encounter that kind of a thing uh as well as of course wildlife and things like that but uh we just try to make sure everybody's on the same page um uh, of course, we supply when it comes to conventional tackle, we supply for for our clients and we we have all the conventional tackle up there for them to to utilize so that they don't have to fly things in. Some guests do bring some and we tell everybody, you know, you have a weight limit of 50 pounds, so you can do whatever you like to. But then you at least don't have to drag rods and all that stuff through the airport, too, as well, at the same time. Right. That's that's a that's an excellent point is that there is a weight limit flying in. And my advice as as a consumer of 
fly fishing products and being able to go to different lodges and 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 outfitters is leave your terminal tackle at home yeah the terminal tackle is what weighs the most sure. right and so by leaving your terminal tackle at home you're able to bring other things that are more important than weights and swivels and blah 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 right and then once you buy it there you're helping to support the lodge as well yeah, so it's it's, it's, a, it's a two prong win for everybody just leave, just you don't need your terminal tackle leave it at home and ever and everybody wins remember when i had my little brain fart there a second ago right when we we're talking about equipment yeah i remembered what i wanted to talk about okay. i wanted to talk about the leader setup for both northern pike and for light trout let's start with light trout for for fly fishing what do you recommend for people to um uh, set up for for light trout certainly um I typically, I run, I try and run fluorocarbon just cause it's, you know, it's clean. Um, mm -hmm. I would rather have a piece of fluorocarbon and, and tie on a knot that you just cut off and retie the next fly on if you're changing. Cause often you don't have to change up too many, you know, too often. A lot of times the fly you put on quite often are going to work. Some people will put a little, you know, a little clip on there and that, some of the pure purest fly fishermen be like, well, no, no, not a clip on there. But you know, uh, some people will put a clip on there. Other people, for Lakers, wire isn't necessary, you know, uh, but I do like the fluorocarbon or heavy mono, but, you know, I prefer fluorocarbon just because it has that abrasion resistance. You think of like minimum 20 pound? That's what I would run, especially if you're in that shallower because you're going to, you will rub some rocks and that, and especially if you hook into a big fish, you know, if you're, if you're running too light of a leader and if you're in that shallower water, they're going to manhandle you and, you know, sometimes you, the right opportunity you got to be ready for. And if they're in shallow, you know that there's an opportunity for you to catch a giant as well. So you you oh, got to be well gone. Now, what about northern? What about northern pike? What's your leader set up for fly for northern pike from the fly line to the fly? Fly line to the fly. I, you know, I I do the same thing. I run fluorocarbon myself on my own. A lot of people will run a wire, you know, uh, but I just run fluorocarbon myself. You know, right. Uh, to twenty to thirty depends on what you're fishing for. Thirty to forty. You know, uh, nice thing about wire is you can kind of neck it down and get to two so it's thin and you can, you know, get it out there rather than have a too heavy of a fluorocarbon where it just won't shoot for you anymore. Right. Yeah, it won't turn over. So one of the things I like about what you're saying is, is if, if you're catching hammer handles on fluorocarbon, you're going to get bit off all the time. Right. Their teeth are so close together mm -hmm. that, you know, even if you've got 20 or 30 pound fluorocarbon on it, you're not going to win that fight. No. But if you're catching giant, the giants that are available at Tazan Lake Lodge on fluorocarbon, as high as you know, 40 or 60 pound fluorocarbon, right? Their teeth are far enough apart that if you're lucky, you set that hook, that that fly will embed in, and the fluorocarbon line will actually rest between the teeth and yeah. not get bit off. So a heavier fluorocarbon in those situations works great. Mm -hmm. Personally, I love to use uh, a knotable bite wire, only about 18 inches. Mm -hmm. I know your fish are not leader shy in any way. And you know what? I'd, I'd, I'd rather risk risk a turn away than, than losing a, uh, you know, a, a 12 inch, 14 inch fly into a, into a fish's face. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Especially if it's the only one you got like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. So let's, let's take a look at, um, a big fish Jenna uh, at the 11th hour on the, on the last day hooked into a fish and landed a fish that, I mean, I think I, I believe, and I've known Jenna for a long time. I believe that this is her personal best in order to fight. Yeah. Let's take a look. Awesome. By, by Trevor up on the sand flat and the water's just so clear you'd see it and uh, I cast to it missed it once cast to it again missed it again I had it he had it in his mouth and I lost it <clears throat> I didn't set the hook hard enough and uh, followed it around waited and <sighs> took it again Trevor told me exactly what to do light twitches hard twitches and Man, this thing is a monster. Absolutely, a beauty, eh? Holy smokes. Good day to be fishing on Tazan Lake. Every day is a good day to be fishing on Tazan Lake. Absolutely. Quick, 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 quick,
47. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad way to end end the trip, huh? No, it was great. That's for darn sure. Now it's nice to see that Caitlin and Jenna were able to get up there and and experience. Uh, such a world-renowned fishery. Um, it, it is truly remarkable what what you've done um, up there over the years to to conserve and to make sure that you've got giants for people to catch. Um, if anybody's looking to book, there is space. Uh, look at tazenlake.com. Uh, Trevor and his team are world world class. I mean, you look after everything. Let's let's have a quick. Before we leave today, let's talk a little bit about your food program because that's an important thing. Absolutely. So what's what's the food like at Taz and Lake Lodge? Pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, typically we've had a, a very good chef over the years and, uh, it's always good quality. People are blown away most times of the quality of the food. And uh, of course, there's abundance of it. And, uh, you know, uh, everything, you're not going to go hungry. And I, I really doubt you'll be disappointed. That sounds fantastic. Um, is there any, Trevor, honestly, is there anything else you want to talk about while I've got you here? Uh, biggest thing, kind of like you said, you know, leave, leave the terminal tackle at home. Don't bring a whole bunch of gear and extra things. We have the stuff that's geared for our fish. You know, uh, as a fly fisherman, definitely you want to bring uh, a few of the things you need and, and want. But, you know, if you're coming, uh, specialty stuff, bring those types of things. Don't bring a whole bunch of stuff that typically most camps have. It's just extra weight, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome, man. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. For anybody that wants more information, on uh, Trevor's outfit, check out tazandlake.com. Um, you run a fantastic outfit. I, I literally talk to Caitlin probably five or seven times a day because she's one of our one of our great editors, and uh, she was excited to be able to watch this to relive to relive the memories. Mm -hmm. um, and she's already chirping at a, at Colin and I to get back out to do <laughs> to do another. Sh We've created Thanks. a monster, Trevor, and I. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. <laughs> excellent yeah no and she did well and jenna did well too as well everybody had a had a great time and we sure appreciate the opportunity to bring you guys up mark that's for sure and we look forward to doing it again awesome so if you haven't seen the taz and lake lodge episode on the new fly fisher it's up on the uh on the youtube page check it out the extended version is on there for more on fishing and hunting in saskatchewan hit hit Fish and Hunt Saskatchewan at the at and the hashtags Fish Sask and Hunt Sask. Thanks, Trevor. I appreciate you very much for taking your time on a busy Wednesday. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk again real, real soon. Absolutely. No, that sounds great. Thank you, too. You take care. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.